with us. Come on, we came here to serve God and to bless his name. Hallelujah. Can everybody clap your hands with us? Hey, hey. Come on, if you know this song, we ask that you to sing along with us right here. Say, all right. Take your place. And take your place. Let your kingdom be established. Let your kingdom be established. Oh, ancient oh, days. Ancient Cause days. you are good. You are good. Come on. And your mercy. And your mercy. And Hallelujah. Forever. Come on. Clap your hands with us. We're going to take it up right here. Oh, come on. Everybody see your eyes. Oh, God.
Pastor Lomax, and I know everyone has been looking forward to the day that we gather again here on our property. So we're not ready to do that yet, but we are doing some things that we haven't done since March of 2020. And today we're going to visit some of our seniors who are homebound. Some of them are ill, but we're going to make sure that they know how much we love them, how much you love them, and how much God loves them. So pray for us as we go. We're looking forward to ministering and just expressing some of the joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this, this is this is Deacon Timothy Smith. That's his that's his uh that's his public name. <laughs> his Instagram name is Omar. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? Good to see you. Wow, what an invasion of love. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how do you feel? I feel well inspired. They're, they're the time. Yeah. They're the grace of God. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, the flesh is trying to take the place of God. Yeah. Like, you know, the flesh is trying to and then there's the Spirit of God. And that's the Spirit of God that's lifted me. And you got it, you got it good. We um we didn't come empty-handed, you know. First, we want to appreciate you and let you know that we appreciate you and, and accepting our invitation. But we brought you some breakfast this morning, so you don't have to cook. You and your daughter can enjoy so some much. good breakfast, you know. All right. Can I share it with you? But we are not having it. We are not. No, no, share it with your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for her life and for your relationship with her. We thank you for how much she loves you and trusts you and depends on you. And so God, we pray that you would continue to be with her in her recent loss of her husband. We know that that is still a fresh wound and space and void in her life. We continue to heal her and continue to help her and strengthen her. And then God, we pray that you'd resolve this issue with the roof quickly and speedily that you would supply all of her needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Deacon Love. How you doing? Okay. Deacon Gene Davis. Okay. Deacon Al Rollins. Good morning. And I'm Deacon Jimmy Stewart. Nice Not only did we come with the pastor, but we didn't come empty-handed. We brought you a breakfast. Oh, All right, yeah. we hope you enjoy it. One of the things that we try to do with our church is to make the gospel accessible to everyone via the internet, uh, using all the digital tools possible. But there's some things that the digital tools cannot do that the gospel commands us to do, and that is to take care of orphans and widows and persons who are shut in, sick. And so that's what we're doing today. We're going from door to door, house to house, to make sure that these persons who are homebound, who are elderly, that they know how much we love them and know how much God loves them. We bought you some breakfast this morning. Oh, you coming in? Or, yeah, we love yeah. you. We, we, um, yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right, for well, you and Mr. Wiggins. You, you, okay. you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful opportunity to assemble in your name, Heavenly Father, to be here. And in the Wiggins household, Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless and keep them, Heavenly Father, we ask that you remove any issue, problems, concern, any problems and tribulation that they're facing at this time, Heavenly Father. We ask that you do this in our Heavenly Father's name, as always, dear God, as the precious one of Jesus Christ, we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hello family, this is Pastor Lomax here at the Fountain Church. And I know many of you have been wondering when are we gonna open our facility back up again? We just got back from visiting several of our seniors, so we're not fully open, but we're starting to do some of the ministry that we used to do before we were shut down. And so we had a great time with these seniors, and I'm gonna let some of the deacons share with you their experience this morning. Yes, we just got back, and I tell you, our experience this morning was awesome. We had the opportunity to visit with some of our seniors who were so grateful to see us come into their homes, share food and prayer with them, and it was just great. It was just great. Yes, after being um, in quarantine, so to speak, for the last uh, 18 months or so, it was uh, great to see the seniors. They were very appreciative of seeing us and uh, just spread in love uh, from us to them and vice versa. It was uh, great to get out again and visit, but it was um, even more exciting to see the smile on their face and the exhilaration as we walked in the door and, and greeted them. They were just so happy to see us, see, see us and we were just as happy to see them. When you, uh, when you do good, you feel good. So I feel great today and I'm just thankful that I'll let you be a part of it. Yes, it was a wonderful experience. We got an opportunity to see some of our members we hadn't seen for quite some time. So they welcomed us with welcome, with open arms, and it was just a great experience to be able to see and fellowship with them. And as we're waiting to get back together, you can still serve and make life better for others. So make sure, get your vaccination, wear your mask, use your hand sanitizer, wash your hands real good. But also, be steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord because as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is Pastor Wayne Lomax here at the Fountain Church where we are growing and serving others. Good morning, Fountain family. My name is Clarence Monaseem, and I'm the worship leader here at the Fountain. And we're so glad to be here, and we are the, the Fountain, Fountain Praise Team. Team. And we just want to celebrate our pastor today. Thank you for providing a home away from home. Thank you, Sister T, for your hard work and dedication for what you've done for the women's ministry. And thank you so much, Pastor Lomax, for being a community leader and a support system to so many. Thank you, and God bless. Say hi, Pastor. Hi, hi. Hi, Sister T. Hey, hey. Say thank you, thank you. for your service hey, hey. and dedication hey, hey. to the fountain hey. and people all around the world. Hey. Say we love you. I love you. <laughs> we thank you for your love, support, guidance, and sacrifice to the people of the Fountain Church. We pray that God gives you back everything that you've poured out and then some. Happy anniversary, Pastor Lomax and First Lady T from Pastor Blakely and Christian Blakely. Hello, Pastor Lomax. It's Councilman Robert Stevens with the City of Miami Gardens, and I want to wish you a happy 45th pastoral anniversary. Thank you for your service and your commitment to our community. It is greatly appreciated. Enjoy this celebration and know that you have our full support in everything that you do. Keep God's first and know that everything will work out.
Hello, Pastor Wayne Lomax. Thank you for 45 years of service and all of the many lives that you've touched within those 45 years. And we're glad that you call Miami Gardens home. And if there's anything that we can do for you, we will, we're there. Happy anniversary again. Greetings, Fountain Family. Pastor Tanika here, and it is offering time. This is the season of Thanksgiving, and we thank God for today and for the opportunity to give. As you may know, today is the kickoff for our season of celebration to honor Pastor Lomax and Sister T. We want to make sure that we share our love and we show our love. Now you can share your love by sending in pictures and shout outs and video testimonies. The link and information is below. You can also show your love through your gifts and monetary support. And you can do all of this by texting the word CELEBRATE to 888-380-5081. Once again, that's 888-380-5081. Everybody, we want to definitely celebrate Pastor Lomax's 45 years of ministry, as well as he and Sister Teresa's founding of this church that continues to bless so many of us and they continue to show us, even after all of these years, what it means to grow and serve others. So can we celebrate them? Can we please do so once again by hitting the link below? And with that, I also wanna thank you for your tithes and offerings. We thank God because your generosity and the giving that you do makes our partnerships possible. Know that because you give, the lives of children, youth, and so many others, our seasoned citizens, and, and those you may never meet are impacted, like those who will be blessed because of our Thanksgiving outreach that we are doing this month. It's this simple, everybody. Because you give, people eat. Because you give, students have scholarships. And because you give, lives are so much better. So thank you once again for your giving and for your generosity. Now, before Minister Mullins comes with our prayer time and our praise and worship teams comes forth, it is my honor to introduce this year's pastor anniversary preacher who is Minister Derek Golden from the amazing church in McKinney, Texas. He is no stranger to the Fountain Church. And so let's prepare our hearts and minds for the ministry and for the message that will come forth. We praise God for him. So after prayer and after praise and worship, the next voice that you will hear is from Pastor Golden. Stay tuned and stay blessed. What time is it? It's prayer time. We come this morning to give thanks and to give honor and glory to God. This is a season of celebration. Many of us are looking towards Thanksgiving and Christmas. But before that, we want to celebrate our pastor. This is the time we want to celebrate our pastor's anniversary, his uh, wife's birthday, and the many years he served in ministry. And we want to acknowledge and thank God for that. The word of God declares, do not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded the corn. So we want to celebrate our pastor in, in gifts, in praise, and just acknowledging that God has blessed him these many years of ministry. Let's go into agreement and prayer this morning. Eternal God and our Father, we bless you. We worship you. We acknowledge you this morning for another day of life, of hope, of peace. God, for your goodness towards us today. God, we come just to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise that is due to your name. God, we come and we lift up this man of God, Pastor Wayne Lomax. Lord, First Lady, Sister Teresa Lomax and their family, God. God, as you've blessed them and brought them this far in ministry, God, we pray and we lift them before you that you will keep encouraging them in their family, O oh Heavenly Father. God, as you pour out the word to your people, God, and we, O oh Heavenly Father, that we will do our part to be encouraged and to serve alongside him, O oh Heavenly Father, God, in all that we do. Lord, I pray this morning not only for Pastor Wayne Lomax, his wife, and his family of this ministry, O oh Heavenly Father, but for all pastors. God, all those who share the word of God, all those who have any father who impart the word of God into the hearts of your people, that we may grow and learn and serve, oh, heavenly father, and become part of the kingdom building. God, we pray for those this morning who are hurting. 
Lord, those who have lost loved ones, oh Heavenly Father, those who are in financial needs, oh Heavenly Father, we still have an issue with COVID. Lord, though it seems like it's going on the back burner, it's still an issue. God, and just as we believe that you can keep the fresh fish in the salt water, Lord, you can keep us from getting COVID. God, we come to you this morning and we thank you and we look and ask you to bless our government. We ask you to bless those in authority, oh Heavenly Father. You said we should do that, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. God, even as we go through this season, as I said, for Thanksgiving and Christmas and celebration, Lord, there's some who've lost so many and so much. God, that it would be hard for them to celebrate. God, I pray into the hearts of these, oh Heavenly Father, to remind them that you still promised them in Matthew 28, verse 20, that you will never leave us or forsake us. God, we recognize you this morning. Lord, just as you said, the far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgression. Thank you for being faithful, O Heavenly Father, that you cause the sun to rise every day. Lord, it rises in the east and sets in the west as you give it circus to do. And God, even as we come before you this morning, just to give you thanks, just to praise, and just to worship, and just to acknowledge that you are the Almighty God. You are the King. You are the Redeemer. You are the Savior. You are the love of our soul. And God, may we believe. May we continue trusting you, regardless of what situation we're going through this morning, that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above which we can ask or think. And we just want to say thanks in your holy and blessed name, Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we're in a season of celebration. And wherever you, be, wherever you are, if you could just celebrate the name of Jesus, the word of God says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall, come on, I said his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. So you ought to open up your mouth right now and begin to give God praise. Begin to bless his name. Come on, his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. It doesn't matter what it looks like around me. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. I will continue continuously give him praise because he's good because he's better than good come on wherever you are begin to bless the name of the lord hallelujah thank you god the song says i will bless the lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth no matter what i've seen no how i feel as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Come on, you want to bless the Lord wherever you are right now. Hallelujah. Now let's sing this together. Say, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see, know how I feel. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing. Now sing this, oh magnify, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. Let's lay down our and lift up His name. Put your hands on it and give God some praise in here. Now let's sing it in. Say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praises. And His praises should continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see. No matter what I see or how I feel. As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm
worship you because you've been better than good to us. God, you've been so good in the good times and bad times. God, you've been faithful. And we just want to love on you and just worship you today. God, we bless your name. So wherever you're at, where you're watching, just take the time to just lift up your worship and declare that God has been so good to you. Hallelujah. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you have always been enough. And though the night may get darker, though the waiting seems long, you have always been faithful to remind me of your love. And you about it. Oh, you have always been patient. You have always been kind. You're consistent through the ages. Oh, what a friend of mine. So I'll remind my soul to bless you, to stand firm upon your truth. Knowing you cannot be shaken, because I
Just take the time to think of his goodness. He's been so good to us. God, we don't deserve your goodness, but we're so grateful and we're thankful for your goodness, your mercy. We're thankful for your grace, your gentleness, your kindness, your faithfulness. God, it's an honor for you to call us your children for you to call us your friend. As much as we haven't been so faithful to you, but God, you've never changed. So God, I pray that you help us to also to be faithful to you. To give honor and reverence to your name. We just wanna worship you and just thank you for your goodness even in the midst of what's going on right now in 2021, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for being so sovereign. We thank you for being better than good. So wherever you're at, just take the time to just be in his presence and just worship him. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, Fountain. Listen, I am so excited to be with you. I'm Pastor Derek Golden of Amazing Church in McKinney, Texas, and I'm here uh, with my pastor, Pastor Wayne Lomax. Can y'all, come on, send up the hearts, send up the emojis, clap uh, if you're in the auditorium. Let's honor God for such a man of God who uh, speaks not only in our lives, but to our lives right where we are. I'm excited to be with you this morning. Come on, let's, let's give him glory. Let's give God praise for our man of God, Pastor Wayne Lomax. And come on, Sister Teresa, can we, can we give a holler out? Come on, can we holler out for <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. Listen, uh, this honor of being with you this morning uh, to teach a lesson in a series uh, of lessons that I believe need to be taught uh, in the body of Christ. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump right into the lesson uh, so that we can make that thing happen on today. If you're excited, somebody say, I'm excited. Somebody say, I'm excited. All right, do me a favor also, like, comment, share, and tag. Make sure that you tag someone. I believe that what God is going to say today is really going to impact us uh, in a way that's going to be transformative, all right? So let's make our faith confession. Grab your Bibles. If you're sitting down at home, grab the hand of someone next to you. Just repeat after me. It's formality, but I want you you to get it as well, all right? Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right now, at this moment, I am alert and will not go to sleep. Today, I will be taught the Word of God, and I will be better after this. Heads bowed. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your Word on today. May it do everything that you intend for it to do. May it go forth and impact uh, their lives in such a way that we're able to see your greatness in what you intend for us to have. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lead and guide as only you can. May my ears be pressed to your lips, O oh God, and may the words I speak, may they do, may they go, may they plant, and may they multiply. In Jesus' name we pray, hallelujah, amen. Come on, if you're saying amen with me, say amen with me, say amen with me. All right, today, today, uh, today I want you to uh, put your ribbon stilicus 
Uh, that's, that's this thing in your Bible. That's the Greek for this ribbon stilicus. All right, put that in your Bible in the book of James. Put that in the book of James. Uh, we're going to go there because that's where we're going to launch today's lesson from. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I've been noticing. Uh, everywhere you go, everywhere you turn, on, on all of the news, everywhere we saw in social media, no matter where we were, we saw information about crazy things, casual conversations about crazy things. Uh, there was going to be a story, a report, a post, or an opinion about or related to either politics or the pandemic. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on. Uh, but very, very little during this time uh, and still now is being talked about this other real killer that's taking lives. While the pandemic and psychotic politics are taking place, this one killer is not being talked about. This thing is so serious, listen, it's so serious that while I was studying for this lesson to teach to you on today, uh, just to mention the name of this silent killer is not healthy. Get this, listen, just to mention its name is, is not healthy. And I'm referring to this word, uh, or two words we can put them together, that's trigger and traumas. Come on, somebody say it, trigger and trauma, triggers and traumas, trigger, trigger. When you say trigger, it automatically causes someone that is dealing with triggers to be cautioned, to be uh, activated, and triggers, triggers, triggers are present and are real for everyone. Uh, triggers are located in the brain and hormonal activity. Triggers affect the body, the mind, and the emotions. Triggers can happen for a myriad of reasons. Triggers have a vast array of express reactions to them, including but not limited to worry, anxiety, addictions, accusations, attention deficits, depression, and sometimes they can even be fatal. Triggers. Somebody says triggers, triggers, triggers. Triggers, and, and all that was going on and, and all that was happening in the world, uh, there are traumas that were taking place and still on today, there are triggers that are bringing you back to those traumas. Triggers. Triggers are defined as things that are presently happening that remind you of a previous trauma or painful moment. Things that are presently happening that remind you of a previous trauma and or a painful moment. So, so when I'm dealing with triggers, I'm dealing with an invisible assault on my mind, my will, and my emotions. My, my mind will, uh, when, I, when I'm experiencing this trigger, my mind, it will alter my thinking. My thinking immediately changes. When I was doing something, when I get triggered, I immediately change and go into another place, another something. It affects my will. It, it will retarget my intended actions. I was going somewhere, but then I got triggered and I turned around and started going in another direction. Come on. Triggers. Triggers will have you change your mind about the thing that you thought you wanted to do. Triggers affect my emotions. It changes my whole attitude. Somebody say, your whole attitude? Yeah. It changes my whole attitude. When someone is triggered, it has the power to change their mood, their intent entire mood. It will change them. Their feelings toward a person, a place, a thing, an activity. Everything is changed once they are triggered. Somebody say triggers. Triggers. This, this situation that's happening, uh, these, these triggers create real moments, real moments. And, and this attack has, has access to me through previous exposure, previous exploitation, or previous experimentation. Previous, previous exposure, yes, uh, I have been exposed to something that, that caused me to have a painful moment and or a trauma. Uh, I, I have, I have been, been exploited by someone who took advantage of me, put me in a situation and, and a condition, a place where I shouldn't have been. And now, now I have this, this lingering trigger about what happened to me. I was exploited. 
Then I have triggers that are tied to experimentation, things that I put myself in, stuff that I tried too soon that I shouldn't have tried, places I went that I shouldn't have gone to, stuff that I was doing that I probably had no business doing, and it caused me to experience trauma and or a painful memory. And there are things that happen in my life today that cause those triggers. Somebody say triggers, triggers. Yet I'm here today to give you another exposure. Yeah, yeah. I I won't exploit you, uh, but I do want you to experiment with it. Today I'm going to give you a new exposure. I'm going to show you something uh, that you need to see that that your mind may not have previously connected with before that I want you to dig deeper into. I want to give you an exposure, one that that is, is found in the Word of God and how we're going to overcome this seemingly uninhibited assault on your mind, your will, and your emotions. This this exposure is going to help you because the Word of God tells us in 1 John 5 and 4, you ought to celebrate on this. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. You are an overcomer because of your faith. If you're glad, come on, y'all, if you're glad that you're an overcomer, if you're glad that God has created that on the inside of you because of your faith, let's give him praise today. Come on, give him glory on today. Send up the hearts, send up the emojis. Come on, give God praise for it. It happens today. So I see this found in the Word of God. I see it found in the Word of God. So so, so I'm an overcomer of the world, and the world uh, in this passage, as John uh, is writing here, is the world's systems, the world's patterns of thought, and the world's fleshly desires. I'll repeat that again to you. Come on, come on. It is the world's system. It is the world's patterns of thought and fleshly desires. John is not saying that you would not be impacted by the world, but that if you are a believer, then you have the victory over the world's systems, the world's patterns of thought, and the world's fleshly desires that are presented to you. So when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, though the temptation may come, I know that I don't have to yield. Though the weapon is formed, I know that it won't prosper. Though it comes and encamps around me, my enemy around me, I know that God is on my side. I know that because I've confessed Jesus that I'm going to have the victory because he always causes me to triumph. And since he ever liveth to make intercession for me, I know that things are working together for my good. Therefore, I'm an overcomer and not just an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. That more than a conqueror, that means I'm a conqueror and I'm an overcomer comer over the world's systems. I don't care how the world is set up. I don't care whether you think it's for you or against you. When you are a believer, you confess that you are an overcomer. Doesn't matter what the world presents, no matter what the system is, whether it's a system of oppression, you are still going to overcome. You're here today because you're an overcomer. Somebody give God praise for it. Not only do you overcome the system, but you overcome the world's patterns of thought. The world's patterns of thought are anti-Christ. The The world's patterns of thought are anti-God. The world's patterns of thought, if it was about God, it would turn you towards him. But everything about the world tries to turn you away from the one God who says that as long as you're in me, in Christ Jesus, you will have the victory. I got any overcomers want to give God praise for it. Come on, give him glory for it. You overcome the systems, you overcome the patterns, and then the fleshly desires. Remember, fleshly desires will profit nothing. Fleshly desires will be corruptible, but the incorruptible are the spirit things of God. Come on, I will show you that. Before I go too far, I'm going to show you, but you are an overcomer. Somebody put in the comment section, say I'm an overcomer, right in there. I'm an overcomer, I'm an overcomer. And yet, with all this evidence, come on, with, with all this information found in the scripture, yet we still find ourselves in this position. So many believers are still bound. And they're still bound by triggers. Triggers are reminders of tra- a previous trauma or a painful moment in your life. I'm an overcomer. God, I'm an overcomer. You put it in the comment section. I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. But yet many are still bound, even though they have confessed faith in the one who set them free. 
The Word of God says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You, you're free, but yet bound. No, no, no. How can I be free and yet still be bound? How, how, I'm free. No, you, you, you're dealing with that trigger still. So in order for you to be free, in order for you to confess this, this overcoming, in order for you to experience this First John 5 and 4, you're going to have to exercise your faith and believe that Christ came and set you free. Somebody give God praise for it. Come on. Come on. Somebody give God praise for it. He set you free. He set you free. Now listen, listen to me. Uh, I don't want to overlook your pain. I don't want you to think I'm trying to get you to just jump past your pain because that's not what this lesson is about. See, this lesson is not about making you uh, feel as if something is wrong with you because you're still dealing with some trauma. No, that's not what this lesson is about. In fact, this lesson is more about talking about how we have spent so much time trying to cast demons out when really we needed to get somebody some help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This lesson is more about dealing with how the church itself has misdiagnosed so many people that are in need of help because of mental attacks. They're in need of help because of hormones being out of balance. And we've been calling these things demons and we've been tearing with them. We've been We've been putting them in time out, and the truth is we should have been putting them in front of a doctor as opposed to putting them in front of something else. Yes, prayer answers all things, and, and yes, the power of God is there to destroy every yoke of the enemy, but yet people are still bound. Some of you are listening to me right now, and most of your trauma didn't come from outside. Your most trauma, your most painful trauma probably came on the inside of the church because when you needed help, when you needed help, we didn't know at the time that we should have got you with someone that could help you manage the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, know, I know it's tough, and, and Pastor Lomax, I thank you for allowing me to deliver this message, but this is the truth. You are tripartite according to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. I'm getting, too, I'm getting ahead of myself. But you are body, soul, and spirit. In other words, you need somebody, uh, you need a personal trainer to work on your body. You need a psychologist, a therapist, a counselor to work on your soul, your mind. And then you need a pastor that can work on your spirit. You are tripartite. You are three-partite being. You need three things working. And we can't just lump everything into one thing. No, no, we can't do that. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. How, how back in the day we used to say, ooh, yeah, they got a tick. Something, something, something wrong with them. Something wrong. Oh, they're getting a check. Y'all remember that? Are they getting a check? Come on, y'all remember that? They're getting a check? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we used to do. We, we used to falsely Accuse people, and now today we understand that mental health is a powerful thing. What do you do with a race of people who have endured such atrocities on a long-standing basis, and nobody has gotten that people help? See, see, there are, there are major traumas that you can readily identify. That's a car accident or something of that nature. And then there are complex traumas, things that are just built up on top of things and on top of things. And I qualify to teach this lesson. <laughs> I qualify to teach this lesson because when I was a young boy in elementary school, in fact, at Lynch Elementary there in St. Petersburg, Florida, while, while, while all the other kids would get to go to lunch, two times a week I had to go and sit with a therapist. And at the time, I thought that was a bad thing. I, I wanted to go to lunch. I, I wanted to play after lunch with the other kids. I wanted to eat in there. But no, I was away because they had diagnosed me as being emotionally handicapped. I couldn't manage my emotions, and I, and I couldn't get them together. There was so much tension and so much craziness going on in the hood that when they started busting us to school, I couldn't manage all of those emotions. And so that thing that I thought, uh, was a curse to me. That thing that I thought was bad for me wound up being one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. I am a firm believer in therapy and counseling and prayer. Come on, y'all. All of it, therapy, counseling, and prayer. And it's available. Why is it available? Because of triggers that you are tied to. Listen, your trauma in your life was never meant for you to be tethered to for the rest of your life. 
Oh, yeah, I'm going to let you get that. That trauma that happened in your life was not meant to be tethered to you for the rest of your life. Somebody give God praise for that. Come on, give him praise for that. Let me, let me give you some scripture on this because I know that y'all are taught well. I told y'all to go to James, the second chapter. Go to James. You put your ribbon still in James. But go to James, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses uh, 14 through 17. Uh, James, the second chapter, verse 14 through 17. It says, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus... This is his critical thinking. This is logic. Thus, also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Jump down to verse number 26, and then it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith, so faith without works is dead also. In other words, he's saying that my faith is going to cause me to do work. If I say I have faith, but I don't have works, it's a good chance that I don't have faith. Listen, James is, if you read the entire book of James, all five chapters, you will find that this brother of Jesus was just as cold as Jesus in terms of his word and vocal delivery. He, he writes here, he says, what is it if someone comes to you that's naked and destitute, what are you going to do? Tell them, go, be warm. You're going to just pray for them and you, have a, and you have the means to help them? He says, don't just have faith. Don't just pray. Pray and do. Come on, y'all. Pray and do. That, that's the thing, that as a church, we would just pray but no doing. We would pray and criticize. We would pray and talk about, but we wouldn't pray and do. And so we had to pray and do. And now we have those that have been praying, those that have been believing God. They also are now doctors and therapists, counselors, and they are also praying and believing God for your delivery. Because if you are an overcomer, if you are in Christ Jesus, if you've named the name of the Lord Jesus and you're dealing with situations that have you bound or trauma that has you tethered by triggers, then you, my friend, are able to overcome by the power of your faith. But faith without works is dead. So you can have faith, but you better have some works as well. Somebody give God praise for it in this room right now. Come on, give him glory for it. Come on, give him glory for it. Give him glory for it. This passage of scripture shows us that, shows us that everyone of us is going to need to overcome. James teaches us that it is a beautiful thing uh, for you to believe. It's beautiful for you to believe uh, that you can do anything and hope anything. But if you're going, uh, if you're not taking the necessary steps, the action that reflect that belief and hope, then you're doomed to a life that lacks results. Woo! A life that lacks results. He's saying uh, if you're believing uh, that you want a full-ride scholarship, if you're believing that you want the new house or the new car, if you're believing for a better relationship, then your faith will respond. You, you can't get a scholarship uh, if you're not in the clearinghouse and or if you're not letting somebody know that you're interested. Uh, you can't get to school if you don't fill out the application. You can't buy the house if you don't at least apply for the loan or at least put the cash away so you can buy all cash with no loan. And you can't have a better relationship if you're going to sit with a counselor so somebody can help you manage through the crisis and the tense moments in your relationship. Oh yeah, I just hit you, didn't I? Yeah, you got faith for everything else. You're going to have to have faith for your relationship as well. I don't know who I'm talking to. I just told somebody something. Yeah, you got faith for everything. You got faith for the kids to get delivered. You got faith for everybody else to, to have, have what they need. You got faith that God is going to come through. He's Jehovah Jireh for everything possession-wise, but he's also Jehovah Jireh for your relationships. I declare that whomever is facing a relationship dilemma now, that God will restore and that he would reconcile, that there will be repentance and that God would restore and that he would reconcile because you're exercising your faith in relationships. Can somebody give God praise for that? Somebody needs you to praise in that moment. Come on, praise in that moment. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So how, how does this faith component work in the monumental effort of overcoming these triggered experiences? 
How, how does my faith, because it's one thing for you to teach and preach it to me, rather, but I need you to teach it to me so I have practical steps and examples. Because all this biblical evidence that I just showed you, all this that you are an overcomer, that you are a conqueror, that God intends for you to have it, that James says that your faith should produce work. We need to know then how can I live the better life? Because we say we apply God's word today to live life how, y'all, in a better way. What is better? What is better? Better is being able to live the life that Christ came, bled, and died for you and I to have, producing the fruit of the Spirit, making disciples by teaching and sharing the gospel, living the abundant life here and now. I'll read it to you again. This is the definition for better, all right? Because you have to choose better for your life. Better is defined for this lesson is being able to live the life that Christ came, bled, and died for. By, by producing the fruit of the Spirit in your life, uh, by making disciples, teaching and sharing the gospel, and then living the abundant life here and now. Somebody give God praise for that, right? So your life was never meant to be tethered to a trauma in your past where the enemy can trigger you at any moment. Any moment. All right, let me give you an example. Of it. Let me give you an example. All right, so y'all, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all ever see this happen before? Huh? Y'all ever see this happen before? Y'all got, uh, y'all got the dog and he's at the house, right? Y'all got the dog at the heat, heat at the house, or you got somebody uh, uh, that 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 you love, and it, it looked like they they are uh, they not winning in life, but you want them to win. <laughs> yeah, this is this is it right here. I, I got. I just want you to see it, all right. And so uh, this is what it is, all right. So here it is. They're trying to go. They're trying to go as far as they can go, and then all of a sudden they almost out the frame, and then uh, some some they can't they can't go no further. They, they can't go any. They can't get any any further. And the more the more you pull on it. It's, it's not, they're not freer, they're going closer to the thing that they're not free from. They're, they're trying to get away, but they can't seem to get away because this string has them tied to that thing. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. It's huge. This string is the trigger. So the trigger has you tethered or tied to this big old thing called trauma. But Jesus didn't come so that you can live your life tethered, tied to the trauma. He came so that you can let the trigger go. It don't bother you no more and that you are away from that trauma. Somebody give God praise for it. He came to set you free. Your life was never meant to be tethered to the trauma in your past. Somebody give him praise for it. Come on, give him praise for it. Our father gave his most precious gift in Christ Jesus. He gave a gift as an offering for our freedom. To free you from the past, to free you from the pain, to free you from pit level living. You do not have to live your life tethered to your previous pain, your previous trauma. Christ came to set you free. And he's given us people in the earth to help us do so. So first, so where are these triggers found? I got to find that out. Where, where, where are they at? The first thing is, where are they found? The origin of repetitive information that has such quick access to you as an individual is found, come on, it's found in a specific location. All right? So first, I got to find out uh, who I am. My identity is found in Christ Jesus. And what, I, what am I? First Thessalonians 5 and 23. I told you I got ahead of myself earlier. I want to give it to you. Uh, it tells us multiple things. One, First uh, Thessalonians 5 and 23 says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, come on, soul, come on, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so here, my whole spirit, I'm a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. I'm a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. Spirit, this is the imago Dei, right? This is the imago Dei. This is the image of God that you were created in. Genesis 1 and 26 says, let us make man in our image. The imago, so I'm created in the image of God. And then Psalms 8, 6 through 8 tells us that this image was not something that was physical, but that this image was in fact spirit. Come on, say in fact spirit, y'all. All right, so Psalm, uh, the 8th chapter, 
is where I want to go. And verse number six through eight, and this is what it says. It says, thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, and thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field. Here's verse eight, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the path of the seas. This is what he says. I've created you in my image to have this dominion. This tells us that it wasn't physical, but in the likeness of the authority of God, the spirit nature of God. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse number 40 through 44, gives us more evidence that we are spirit. I want, I want to give you this so that you will have it. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses number 40 through 44. Y'all say you would say, stay with him, stay with him. All right. It says, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, uh, but the glory of the celestial one and the glory of the terrestrial one is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body. Come on. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Come on. Somebody say, I'm a spirit. Come on. I'm a spirit and I possess a soul. There's so much evidence that supports the spirit nature of man. But not only is he a spirit, but that spirit that God has placed you in has caused you to experience liberty, has caused you to experience freedom. Some Somebody say, calls me to experience freedom. All right, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. I am supposed to be free. Come on. Somebody say it. Say it. I am supposed to be free. I am supposed to be free. So my impact statement for you today is we are spirit beings that have an earthly body and we possess a soul. We're spirit beings who have an earthly body and we possess a soul. But the soul is, is often confused with the, the image of God that we were originally created in. The soul uh, in this passage of scripture here is the Greek word suke, all right? It's the Greek word suke, which is the life, the spirit, the breath of, uh, the seat of consciousness or the mind, the intellect, the seat of affections or emotions. So, so the soul is comprised of the nature and character. The soul is connected to both the body and the spirit. The soul is the one that's in between. You've heard it, the dividing of sunder of body and spirit, uh, body and soul, and the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit. That, that's, the, that's the body. That's the soul in those, or in between those areas. The soul is my mind, my will, my imaginations, my intellect, uh, my emotions. That's the soul. And the Word of God says in 3 John 2, it says this is the key of today's message. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. All right. Better is for you. You are an overcomer. You're an overcomer by your faith. Yet faith without works is dead. You cannot just pray only. You must pray and you must do. But if you're going to break away from the triggers that have you tied to your life's previous traumas, you're going to have to do work on your soul area. You're going to have to do work on your soul. Beloved is referencing the elder when, when, uh, when he's talking here. Uh, John is talking to Gaius in this. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. Just as your soul prospers. It is therefore apparent that we make sure that our soul, our mind, our will, our imaginations, our emotions, and our intellect, that our soul is not struggling to move forward, but that it has ease. It is is the, the suke or where we get our word psyche from. If, we, if the word in the Greek is suke, where we get our word psyche from, then psyche means working in the mind area. So you need a 
doctor that works on the mind. They're called psychologists or a therapist that can work on your mind, which will work on your soul area, your suke. This will help you be able to come into balance because you can't even receive all that God wants for you because you're tied, you're tethered to, come on, you're tethered to a previous trauma. You're trying to be free, but triggers keep you tethered to your trauma. And all because we'll go to the doctor if there's a cancer around. We will we'll go to the doctor if we're having trouble breathing. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the doctor if we got pains in our bodies. But when it comes to pain that's in our head, that's holding us back, we fight against that. Why do we do that? Because of the stigma built up by the church. And so today, I want you to have better. Today, I took you through all that scripture. Today, I wanted to walk you so that you can see that even the Scripture supports us doing something about our soul, getting some help for our soul. If you got that, somebody give God praise for it. Come on, somebody give God glory for it. Push it, come on, nudge them in the room, elbow them and say, I got to get some help. This is where we are. People are in need of help. With 2020, 2021, psychopolitics, all kinds of things that are happening in our face, all around us, our children, our loved ones, even our marriages are failing because we won't get somebody that can help us to help us. Somebody shout, help me. Come on, help me. We need to get the help. If you're going to live better, if you're going to live the abundant life that Christ Jesus came and died for, you're going to have to get some help because the triggers will keep you tethered to the trauma. And Christ came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Christ came so that you might be free. If that's you and you're here today and you're saying, help me, put it in the comment section. Help me. Be bold about it. Be transparent as you can. Christ came so that you might be free. And that's what this lesson was about today. So that you can find the free. Help God, I don't know why I'm still tied to this. I, I don't know why it won't let me go. I'm trying to be free, but it seemed like the further I go, it's still there. Even if I get this far away, it's still something that reminds me that I'm not yet fully free. And beloved, I want you to know that you can be free. The blood of Jesus faith, gospel, and then God has put you in the place where you can get some help to change your life. I love you. Come on. Let me pray for you. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. If you're at home, grab someone that you love. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that all the limits are released, all of the triggers be removed, all of the stigma of going to get help is destroyed that we're able to see the fullness of what you want to have happen in the life of the believer. Galatians 5 tells us to stand fast and, and for us not to get entangled again unto bondage by triggers that take us back to our traumas. Help us, God, to the hills from which our help comes from is where we gaze. If you don't do it, it won't be done. Give us the right people. Give us the right doctors and therapists, the right pastor we have. Now, God, help us to walk fully in what you call for us to be, and that is better. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout better. Come on, somebody shout better. Say, I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better. Listen, thank y'all so much for joining today. I cannot tell you, uh, someone else is going to come on and give the appeals and, uh, and all of the other instructions that come along with it. Again, uh, love you. Can't wait to see you on the other side of better because your life was never be meant to be tethered by triggers to previous trauma and or pain. Christ came to set you free and fully free indeed. Y'all be blessed. God is so good. God.
I know some of you believe this today. It says, He answers prayers. He answers prayers. Because God is so good. He Sing this like you believe it. See, he answers prayer. 